stay If you win it Comes and goes in a minute Where's the real stuff in life To cling to Love all right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Boomer Pod podcast, where we interview movie and TV celebrities that are of the baby boomer generation. Our guest today is another renowned stunt actor and coordinator, Mr. Ben, I'm sorry, Mr. Ken Kersinger. Welcome, Ken. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> nice to nice to see you again. And thank you for being with us today on the Boomer Pod. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> Ken, let, let's talk about your career in the stunt world. How did you get started? Yeah, well, I uh, up until I was about four or five years old, I think I wanted to be Jacques Cousteau. And then uh, later on I in life, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I read an article when I was 12 about Hal Needham, this famous stuntman from L.A. And and uh, I think at 12 years old, I decided that's what I, I wanted to be and kind of tucked it away in the back of my head. And fast forward to university, I uh, was playing college football and I injured my knee and I thought, well, that's not, I'm going to take a year off university. It's a good time to go down to Los Angeles and look into becoming a stuntman. And turns out my next door, uh, my sister was living in L.A. and with raising her family there. And uh, her next door neighbor was the property master on the old TV series uh, Fall Guy. Wow. And uh, he gave me the phone number of one of the stunt guys on the show. And he, in turn, gave me the phone number of a, of a stunt guy he knew in Vancouver. And, and I came back and, and uh, made a call. And uh, wasn't long after that, I was working on my, my first movie, uh, Superman 3. That's fantastic. Now, I understand that you're friends with one of our previous guests, the Halloween Resurrection star who played Michael Myers, Brad Lurie. That's right, Brad. Brad, Brad, and I go way back. Tell us about that. Well, Brad and I met uh, through a mutual friend, another stuntman, and uh, Brad was kind of like uh, uh, his name was Tony Morelli, and and uh, he was a little like Tony's younger brother, and uh, that's the way Tony treated him. And he he brought him out to set one day to uh, to do a, a stunt or uh, something easy, and and uh, and that that's when I met Brad and. Uh, we got to talking and Brad was going to go back and work on the, on the oil fields. And I kind of talked him into staying and being a, becoming a stuntman. And uh, I said, give it a try. You can always go back to the old, you know, the oil fields. And uh, so he stuck around and, and uh, started training and uh, getting more work and made himself a very nice career as a stuntman. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Now tell us about Freddie versus Jason where we were playing the part of Jason Voorhees, I think. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, it's uh, this year is actually, I guess, the 20th anniversary of Freddy versus Jason. Um, I had worked on a previous Friday the 13th movie, uh, number eight, uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. I was the stunt coordinator, and I was the stunt double uh, for Jason. And, and uh, years later, they roll into town to shoot Freddy versus Jason. And I got called up to interview for the stunt coordinating job and met with the producer, the line producer. And, and uh, he wasn't really paying attention to what I was saying. He knew I had worked on another Friday the 13th. He liked that. And then he asked me, well, would you audition to play Jason? And uh, I said, well, what, what about the other guy, uh, uh, Kane Hodder? He had played him uh, four times before that, I think. And, and, uh, he said, well, we just wanted to go a different way. Would you, would you like to audition for it? And, uh, so I did, it was a kind of a corny audition. It was a close up on my eyes wearing a really cheap mask for, uh, they had me reacting with my eyes to the scene, the opening scene of the movie where the girl's swimming in the lake. And then they had me walk around the room and, uh, that was the audition. And based on that, uh, I, uh, met with Ronnie Yu and I got the job. Did all auditions be that easy? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Why horror? Uh, horror was something I, I enjoyed growing up. and But uh, honestly, it's just the way the direction my career went. Because I was a big guy, 
uh, you know, I got cast as the Sasquatch on an, an episode of MacGyver, and uh, mm. I got cast as a robot to, in The mm. Outer Limits, and and uh, you, you know, cast as a zombie or uh, just some anything big and intimidating, a werewolf. Uh, um, you know, I seem to get those roles. So uh, playing, you know, thugs and henchmen and and uh, monsters just sort of happens when you're this big. <laughs> And now, is that what happened with the um, Incredible Hulk? Well, the Incredible Hulk was just, uh, uh, you know, I got hired on that to be one of the, we call them ND, nondescript stunt people, where, uh, you know, there's lots of carnage going on and you need stunt people running in between, you know, smashing cars and and uh, running from the monsters and diving over, you know, things. Uh, so it was, I was just one of many uh, stunt people that worked on that movie. Um uh, in Toronto and uh, it was a lot of fun to work on though because we had a lot of stunt people for the sequence we were doing and uh, anytime you get that many stunt people together it's uh, you know on location uh, leads to a lot of uh, uh, after work hijinks and and fun so uh, it's great to be on location with that many stunt guys. Well now in our prep you've asked to discuss some very interesting topics outside of the acting and stunt world well, now you asked me, you, I, I didn't ask to, you asked me for topics. I said, the, okay, these are topics that are interesting. So they're interesting topics. Uh, I'm not, uh, 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 you know, okay, a well, well, therapist, uh, uh, theorist or anything like that. But I, some of these topics are pretty interesting and you were, you were asking for other things to talk about. So. Well, I, I forget what I had for breakfast. So I forget, <laughs> I forget who asked who, but let's dive right in. Sure. What are your thoughts on 9-11? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, I don't think all the answers are out there. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody knows exactly what all went on. And uh, uh, I, I honestly don't think it's exactly as, as they, you know, as people have been told. And there are people involved with the investigations that will say the same thing. And, and new information is coming out all the time. Uh, it seemed, you know, trickles out here and there, uh, the Saudis' involvement, uh, particularly, and the families of 9-11 have been pressing to get information about how involved the Saudis were, that some of that information may never have come out if they weren't as pers persistent as they are. Uh, so, uh, I, yeah, I don't think all the answers have been given yet on that. Uh, I don't know what's uh, truth or, uh, or what's, uh, what, what all the truth is or what all the fiction is, but Certainly, an interesting topic that uh, it, I think will last as long as uh, the JFK assassination. I mean, what do you think? Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I would, I would don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say what I thought unless I had a, a definitive reason for thinking that. All I know is that uh, with the new information that's come out, it's evident that we haven't. Not, all the information wasn't given out in the very beginning. Um, so uh, I think it's something that would need more investigation and uh, uh, you'd have to uh, get a hold of all the paperwork that's available to figure out exactly what's going on. But it, all I'll say is that it's it's not as everybody has been told and that's right. evident by the new information that's coming out. Right. And how about Jeffrey Epstein? Oh yeah, well, Jeffrey Epstein, I mean, uh, uh, I, uh, you know, my, thinking on it is that uh, you know he just had connections to so many people that governments and big business would love to have connections with and uh you know he he was a bit of a honey trap uh you know he would put people in compromising positions or maybe just get them so relaxed they'd hand out more information than they should um but uh yeah he that whole thing kind of smacks of something uh of subterfuge and you know, spying and, and uh, uh, how, it, you know, spying has been used over the years. So, you know, him, be, he, him uh, you know, uh, uh, ending himself in, in uh, prison seems unlikely to me. Um, so that's, uh, that's, it's highly suspicious. He doesn't seem like, or didn't seem like the kind of person that would have committed suicide. Yeah, I don't. I think there was a lot more people that uh, would have wanted him dead than him. Um, you know, he was leading a pretty good lifestyle, and uh, yeah, the jig was up. But uh, you know, he was in prison, but uh, he certainly had a lot of uh, money and influence, and uh, we know how that can affect courts. So mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, for him to kill himself, I think that's a, a, a stretch. Yeah, I do too. And JFK? Well, JFK, I mean, uh, again, uh, you know, I, I'm not an expert on the subject, but, but new information comes out about uh, 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 Oswald and his connections. I mean, if you were going to get somebody to sh kill the president, uh, how hard would it be now to go out and find someone who's uh, really militantly against the, the president and then encourage them and give them opportunities to commit a crime? Uh, and then, you know, you could do all that without leaving any fingerprints on them. And so you're essentially using a person and motivating them to commit a murder. It's like going to somebody and telling them, you know, I know your wife's screwing around. Um, you know, and, and you know, this guy has a history of violence and you go and go to him and say, Hey, I think your wife is screwing around, you know, uh, you know, will you hold my gun for me? <laughs> you know, and then yeah. the guy goes off and kills the guy that's, uh, uh, having a, or he thinks is having an affair with his wife. Uh, you know, it's manipulation, it's, it's subterfuge and, and, uh, all you have to do is not leave any fingerprints. But unfortunately, I mean, if you look, there are fingerprints on Oswald. And his connections, you know, who he saw, when, when, when he saw them, uh, motive means opportunity. It was all uh, there if you had somebody who was motivated by their political uh, instincts to, to go out and do something like that. Yeah. What's your take on God? Uh, I, uh, you know, so I was raised Roman Catholic. You and I have talked about this before. Uh, right. uh, I, I was raised Roman Catholic. So. Uh, we're taught from a very young age about God and, and, uh, but my parents were not super pushy about, uh, you know, we had to go to church on Sundays and observe uh, religious holidays, but basically once we left the house, we were allowed to make up our own minds about things. And, uh, so I think for a while I, I looked at religion and I wasn't satisfied by it and I didn't believe in anything and, and, uh, uh, just thought, oh, you know, religion is just, for the weak-minded and you know people who need a crutch to to get through life you know um and you know because we all we're facing death and and uh, it offers us a, a kind of a life preserver and then and uh so that was kind of depressing not believing in anything uh so then i started funny reading about quantum physics and and uh how science and religion were coming so close together and and uh and how uh, our consciousness might be able to affect our realities. And, and uh, so I started thinking that there was more to life than just uh, existing for the amount of time we have, that maybe we have some influence on, uh, uh, on our reality. I mean, uh, um, do you, you've heard of uh, the law of attraction? Yes. Uh, so, uh, and in quantum physics, I think, and I can't go into all the details of it or whatever, but the, the things that one of the things that I've seen mentioned is that every time we make a decision, we, it's like we create a new reality where the person who made the yes decision goes this way, and the person who made the no decision goes that way, and it kind of creates this infinite uh, set of realities. Um, but uh, uh, so, uh, if we can do that, if that's a possibility, then you know uh, maybe we have more influence over our existence uh, than we think. And uh, I found that really interesting and kind of refreshing. And th th at one point, I started thinking, you know, if ever, instead of manifesting wealth or fame or, uh, you know, why not? Why not try to manifest immortality for everybody? <laughs> you know, why not? Why not try to manifest uh, uh, to, to that we uh, defeat the, the the diseases of aging and cancer and heart disease and. And uh, uh, wouldn't it be an interesting world if we could all live longer and, and uh, uh, you know, maybe forever, maybe there's a way to eventually put our, our consciousness into uh, join with machines and, and be in a sense indestructible. Um, so I find that, uh, you know, thinking and, and uh, investigating that or contemplating it, it's kind of reassuring in its own way. It's its own kind of religion. You have to have faith in in uh in in the in that possibility that's amazing that's amazing that you think this deeply about things and how do you feel about the end i mean would you like to live forever i think i'd like the i'd like the option 
uh, you know, they, every time you see a movie about people who look for immortality, there's always a bad ending, right? <laughs> and it's always, you know, the wrong thing to do. And, and uh, uh, you know, maybe that's the test in life is to have that faith. You know, we're, we're taught in religion to have faith. You have to have faith. Maybe that's the test in life is that, you know, uh, the, death is taught to us that, you know, since you're a small child, you learn about death and dying and, you know, you have to prepare for the end and, and uh, you know, live your life. Life is short. Um, you know, what changes would there be if we were all living longer? How much uh, intelligence would be kept in this world if it wasn't taken away after, you know, uh, 60, 70 you know, 80, 90 years, um, you know, all that education, all that ex life experience would make us better citizens, you know, for our communities and, and uh, to our family and friends. Uh, you'd learn so much if you lived longer. So, uh, and I look at science now and, and uh, honestly, there's people out there that think it's just around the corner. Um, uh, Dr. Sin David Sinclair is very well known uh, uh, in, the, in the human longevity and, and now an age reversal field. And in January of this year, uh, he announced that he had been able to manipulate the age of a mouse uh, by, uh, oh, I forget the technique now, uh, but they were able to age a mouse and de-age a mouse and essentially uh, uh, stop aging and reverse it. So if that's, the first step, I mean, that doesn't make us immortal. That doesn't make us impervious to train wrecks or plane crashes or war and things like that. But it might motivate people not to go to war if they if 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 they could live much longer. You know, it might give people a much more uh, bigger reason to uh, to treat this world better. How's your health, Ken? Uh, you know, I'm a beat up old stuntman. I. I uh, I ha certainly have my aches and pains, but uh, I have a lot of great memories and I had so much fun doing what I did that, uh, you know, I'll, I, I won't complain about it. Um, it's just, it is what it is. You got these aches and pains. If I had been a pro football player or whatever, I'd, I'd have the same thing. And I just really enjoyed what I did. Um, so that makes it all worthwhile. Well, I enjoy discussing world affairs. Let's talk about something else. Sure. How, how about the Russo-Ukrainian war? Do you what, know anything what, about that? Well, I mean, I, you know, I know a little bit, you know, what, what I see on the news and stuff. I know that it so, seems like such a waste. Uh, and, and it seems, you know, that we should be on, be beyond that in the 21st century. Um, I just, it's so, you know, 19... <laughs> Uh, 40s, you know, 30s. Uh, uh, I just can't believe it. And uh, and I can't believe that, you know, the people of Russia would let this dictator uh, bring us the whole world to uh, such a place that we're at where we have to start worrying about, it, you know, uh, nukes and, uh, you know, blowing up the world again. You know, I thought we grew out of that. And, uh, but that, you know, it's the, the, the price of peace is what eternal vigilance and uh yeah, we right. see these despots creeping up all over the world again and if we've forgotten the past we're doomed to repeat it and uh so unfortunately we're letting it happen ourselves by not voting simple thing mm -hmm. like that you know people don't mm -hmm. vote or they're manipulated by the media or you know uh um nowadays you've got all this fake uh ai they can make anybody say anything um, so it's confusion. People don't know what to believe. Um, but uh, I, I think you can look for your guiding lights, you know, things like people who preach about fracturing society, about uh, uh, pulling us apart. That's, you know, that's a huge warning sign for me. Uh, you need to pull people together. You need to look for the similarities that we all have and uh and not become polarized um yeah you, you know the if you see somebody trying to fracture uh uh pull people apart you know they're not up to no good yeah do you think it all hinges on putin oh very much so 
you know, I think he called the shots on this from the very beginning. And it was a choice. It wasn't a, it wasn't a need. Um, there was no need to do what he did. Um, other than, you know, I, I've heard some people suggest that, uh, you know, he's getting on in years. He's, I think he's in his late 60s now. His health may not be good. And he wants to leave a legacy. Well, uh, he thought it was going to be easy to walk in there and, and claim back these places that had been part of Russia or in the past. Uh, um, and, uh, and it wasn't. It was a huge mistake. And that's unfortunately, that's his legacy now. And there's no saving face over what he's done. Um, this is, you know, uh, until he's gone, uh, Russia and the Russian people are going to wear this. You know, the rest of the world is looking at them going, you're letting this happen. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a very, very sad thing that I thought we had grown out of, uh, you know, as a, as a world. With so many Russian people supposedly against him, how do you think it is that the guy is still walking around? That's just a tribute to his iron fist. You know, he's got, he's got, he, he, he knows how to manipulate his people and he knows, and the ones he can't manipulate, he'll, he'll make fear them. There's a reason why so many of his top people are suddenly falling out of their windows, uh, you know, or, uh, or, or dying unexpectedly. And it's pretty obvious why, you know, you go against me, you better kill me because I will kill you. And that's exactly how a mob boss works, right? You know, if somebody comes yeah. after him, he's going to set and make them an example so nobody else does. You brought up another topic, which I find somewhat interesting, and that's human consciousness. Yeah. What do you mean by that? What is your definition of that? What is my definition of consciousness? Um, you know, I don't, I, I've never really written a definition down, but uh, I would have to say it's, it's, it's that, uh, that, entity within us that is separate somehow from uh the corporeal it's the it's the thoughts in our brain it's something that has no uh you know they say that it, uh, the pineal gland is a is the physical connection to our spiritual consciousness um so consciousness isn't anything physical it's just it's what we're thinking it's like radio waves that go out and uh you know uh they're there we know they're we we know our thoughts are there but you know am i really am i seeing the world as it is does this computer really in front of me or is that is that what's being programmed into my brain to to think i see um so i i don't know if anybody knows exactly what consciousness is um other than uh you know it's question does consciousness exist after the body's gone uh so but and again but possibly consciousness could be the most powerful thing in the universe it be, could be capable of of creating uh well people used to think that matter was created you know big bang and and then out of that all that matter came consciousness and there's a school of thought out there that says that well no consciousness probably came first and created the big bang uh which would make uh, consciousness the most powerful force in in, in the universe uh, so it's it's something that we really need to study and see uh, you know how much our consciousness uh, does affect uh, our reality uh, um, it's it's a fascinating topic can I quote you yeah uh, sure you've been known to have said the truth is just the best information you have at the time is that yeah. correct yeah yeah i believe that uh, there's everything we think we know uh uh you know seems to change uh over time right we because we gain more information and uh uh is that our it's like you know an interesting thing is star trek i'm a big star trek fan uh a lot of the things that were in star trek uh, the, the flip open uh, phone and, you know, were things that people saw on Star Trek and then manifested, uh, created later. And uh, so, uh, physicists are even working on teleportation and have had, uh, you know, a success of, you know, teleporting a, an atom or whatever, a portion of an atom uh, to a different location. So 
uh, is our does our imagination uh, then uh, uh, affect our consciousness, and uh, do we create what it, we have in our imagination? Uh, so again, consciousness. It's it's. Uh, I think it's kind of a new religion in a way, a new a new study in 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 a way of thinking uh, that more and more people are getting interested in. Well, there are no facts. There is no truth, just data to be manipulated. Now, that's a quote by Don Henley, the founding member of the Eagles. What's your take on Don's belief? Can you say it for me one more time? There are no facts. There is no truth, just data to be manipulated. Okay, so that sounds to me like... Uh, sort of what I said, but that uh, people use facts and data to manipulate people. Uh, so, uh, you know, people will, will use a portion of the truth to, uh, to uh, bolster their argument. But because there is no full truth, uh, they can't be right about it, I guess. It, so it sounds to me like he, he, he's saying sort of what I said, but uh, that people use that to uh, manipulate other people. And it's a terrible well, thing. Is, that, what I, is yeah. that how you read it? Is that how you yeah, read it? Exactly. Yeah, That's exactly how I read it. Yeah. And some of the most interesting people in the world that I've known have come to be great manipulators. And it's an interesting fact, uh, probably the greatest manipulators that I've found in the world are politicians. Yeah. And there's nothing that can be done about that. But we move on. We move on. Is there anything else that you'd like to add or pitch, Ken? Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, we've covered some pretty interesting topics. Uh, and I appreciate the conversation, uh, Larry. It's been really nice talking to you. Well, I appreciate it, too. Are you getting ready to, to get involved in any other productions? Uh, I, I'm sort of in talks right now with a, uh, a, a regarding a script that I've written and uh, uh, kind of got my fingers crossed uh, uh, that it all works out and the project gets made. Um, so uh, I've been working on that and I'm also working on uh, uh, writing another script as, uh, as we speak. So I'm um, staying busy with the creative end of my life and giving my body a, a chance to uh, 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 look after itself. What is his genre? Uh, the the one that uh, is a is a horror that uh, we're in talks with, and uh, the other one is is a uh, it's a comedy. Really, from horror yeah. to comedy. Yeah, well, I just, that's a know, stretch. <laughs> there's a lot of funny things in life. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, and there's a lot of funny things in horror too. If you look yeah. at it the right way. Yeah, yeah. Well. Will you join us in the future to share any updates? And sure, you give me. You, yeah, you give me a shout, and and uh, and uh, we'll find out together if this uh, movie gets made or not. That sounds wonderful. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Be well, my friend. You as well. Take care. Thank you so much for the conversation. You're welcome. We'll talk again. Bye bye. Bye. And you will be happy too.